Blessings. May the grace of God and the spirit of the living God be magnified in your life. May the Holy One of Israel, the God of all creation, heaven and earth, who is also in Christ and Christ is in him, sanctify you to give you power and obey him. I'm Brother Joseph Herbert. I want to get on here and talk about the glory of God. Let God be magnified in your life. Let God be magnified in your life. And I was just, just when sons of God are the redeemed sons of God, the Christians who have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. And I'm sorry, give me one second here. I have to turn this around. One second here. Like the, there we go. There we go. So I have to change this around. So yes. Because God is supposed to be magnified. God is supposed to be glorified every day for him to work in your life so faithfulness in him can be made manifest. And so God is faithful in everything that he does. There is no darkness in him. There is no flaws in him for he is perfect. There is no nothing that is evil. However, he has he made evil. He made good. He 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 is the sword of Jesus Christ is the sword of his word. And you have the whole armor of God. You have the whole armor of God that Christians as we are supposed to put on every day. We don't and even though there is a time that we should there is a time that we should not even take it off, but but keep it on. And how we keep it on is our faithfulness and obedience to him. You know, our feet is to be shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And to be girded with the truth. You know, the Lord, Father God Almighty, Jesus Christ, desires truth in the inward parts and in the hidden parts. He will make you know wisdom because you are in him. And how does he make you know wisdom? Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and understanding. And those who love it will eat the fruit thereof. So we are to love wisdom. We are to love his righteousness. We seek him in righteousness and humbleness. And then you have the breastplate of righteousness, which is an example of guarding your heart with all diligence, keeping your heart from evil, keeping your heart from defilement, because, again, like I say in most of my videos, the, the eyes are gates to your soul. The ears are gates to your soul. We are, ref, we are supposed to reflect Jesus. We are supposed to reflect the glory of God. And we reflect him in worship. We reflect him in meditating on his word. Basic fundamentals. We reflect him in prayer. Because Jesus prayed. Jesus did all these things. There are many examples. King David worshiped the Lord in the beauty of holiness. We are to reflect God Almighty. The what else? The helmet of salvation. Our minds as Christians are renewed. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds so that we can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Paul, by the Holy Ghost, said that in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, we are to, in the renewing, why our minds need to be renewed? Because old things have to pass away. Old things, old desires have to pass away in this body. Yes, this is the tip, the body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And depending on what age you have been saved, um, let's just say you've been saved since she was 18, you got saved, but now you're, you know, you're 34 maybe, or probably even younger than that. Old things are passing away, meaning old desires, things you, that you used to do, you don't do them no more. Things, how you used to think, you don't think that way no more. How do, the things, that, how do you speak? You don't speak like that no more because the world speaks in, in ways that they, that displeases the Lord, the minds of those who are not born again, 
They th their thoughts reject the will of God. The word of God says a carnal mind is enmity against God. Um, your what you used to do in action, you used to reject. You did things that rejected the will of God. So if you were to stand before God as one who rejected the will of God, the Holy One of Israel, the God of all creation, will reject you in the day of judgment. So what I preach to you is. God is supposed to be magnified. You are supposed to be glorified in Jesus Christ. You glory in the Lord. You are created for that purpose. You are created to serve the living God. And what else? You have the helmet of salvation. We already made mention of that. You have the shield of faith to quench all fiery darts of the wicked. Yes, as sons of God, we are tried by the fire. The fire refines us as gold. And what I mean by that is we are overcomers. The devil is going to throw darts. The world is going to throw darts. Your flesh want to do things that it's not supposed to do. You have to bring it under subjection, under your control. For the Holy One of Israel, God of all creation, the spirit of the living God is in you. And so John says, greater is he that is in me than he who is in the world. So in God, in Christ Jesus, you have strength to do what is necessary to be of your father's business. And what else? The shield of faith. The shield of faith is to quench all fiery darts of the wicked. So your faith, without faith, you can't please God. With And without faith, that is describing unbelief. Your measure of, of faithfulness to God it is supposed to grow when you believe on God he does the miraculous and in he wants to do the miraculous in you when you do the miraculous what Jesus said and towards the end of Mark that you will heal the sick when you lay hands on them and, and they will recover that's a promise from Jesus Christ the Lord when you do these things that happens um what else he said raise the dead let me go there real fast before I get into this chapter in Psalms, Mark chapter 16 says this, Jesus Christ, the Lord says, give me one second here, as I turn to it. So he says this after he has resurrected, and he says, go into all the world. Now this is a promise, this is what we are supposed to do because it's a commandment by Jesus Christ. Jesus says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Meaning, whether it's online, whether it's the pulpit, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or evangelizing, whether it's wherever, street preaching, Jesus Christ commanded, commanded. He gave instructions. He also said, as as in as it ties in with this he says if you love me keep my commandments many people profess to be christians but they don't love him because they don't obey him they don't obey him he commanded to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature that's magnifying the lord because jesus christ preached the word of god he preached the kingdom of god his disciples preached the kingdom of god so Every Christian is made to glorify God. You are made to glorify God. So the ungodly, they're not born again. You are made to glorify God. How can you glorify God? You can't until you believe, until you commit to Jesus Christ, until you devout yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, Redeemer. He was bruised for our iniquities. Wounded for our transgressions and the chastisement of our peace was on him. And with his stripes, we are healed. So when it comes to healing, and as I have many testimonies when it comes to healing. And in fact, I have a testimony today. I woke up this morning because I didn't prioritize the Lord as planned because I have I gave into my flesh to continue to sleep. However, the Lord chasing me and I 
received the, uh, not received the, but I, I was given a headache. And the word of God says, my son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, even as a father in whom he takes delight in. So, yes, the Lord chastened me this morning, and I had a headache in one spot, and it got larger. Because I delayed my time in the presence of God. I delayed my prayer time. As I, on Saturday mornings, I'm off work. Of course, I'm going to spend time in the pray, presence of, of the Lord. And so when I got in the presence, I repented because, you know, you have to be sensitive to the voice of God and his commandments and what he has spoken in time past before. That he is your first love. He is number one priority. He is number one in your life. He should be. If you profess that you are Christian, Jesus Christ should be number one in your life. So. As I was repenting, as I was confessing my fl my flaws, my mistakes, my ways that displeased the Lord, I felt healing. I felt the presence of God magnifying his peace in my body. The headache disappeared not like it never came. I rebuked that headache in Jesus' name. And so the promises of God are yes and amen. Jesus, I'm going to read this again. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes, listen closely, because, yes, this word has been preached before, time, time and time again. This word has been preached before. Many professed Christians will not read this or preach this. But this is a commandment that needs to be followed if you obey Jesus. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized, water and spirit. He didn't say water and spirit here, but to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and water, that's water and spirit. Jesus explains these things to Nicodemus, yet it was heavenly language. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, shall be saved. The Christian is being saved. The Christian is saved and will live his life as he is saved. He is redeemed. The promises of God are on the sons of God. The favor of God is on the sons of God. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believes not shall be damned. Meaning he will be condemned. The, John the Baptist puts it like this in John chapter 3. The wrath of God abides on them that believe not. And so, and he says, when you, in, in, in according to believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and what he said in that commandment, this is the commandment and this is the promise that falls behind it. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. Yes, we are supposed to cast out devils. Devils are evil. And the world, the world cannot see that. The world don't, don't does not understand that the light of the body is the eye, and or to be careful how you hear. These are the words of Jesus given to the disciples because they don't understand the mysteries of God. We are given the mysteries of God. We are given by the by the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost what the Father reveals to the Son, and the Son reveals it to us. We, we are to understand and grow in understanding the mysteries of God. We are supposed to understand parables. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. That's the heavenly language. That is the unknown language that Paul by the Holy Ghost made mention in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And I believe he made mention of that in chapter 12, but he emphasized it boldly in chapter 14 of 1 Corinthians. For, uh, verse 18, they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing. Now, he didn't mean to willfully go take up serpents. No, by your faith, you have an example. Paul, by the Holy Ghost in the book of Acts, 
He was he was shipwrecked and on the on an island with uh, the barbarians. There, barbarians are also descri can be described or defined as heathens or one people who are uncivilized and that reject the will of God. So Paul was near a fire, a campfire, and he reaches in and a snake, a viper, a venomous snake wraps around him and, and bites him and he shakes it off. He shakes the snake off. The barbarians were watching him to see if this man is going to die because he just got bitten by a venomous serpent. And so it did not happen for the Lord God has has protection. His assurance is on his son. Paul is is a vessel of the Lord, chosen vessel of the Lord. And the Lord protected him. If they shall take up serpents and if they drink any de deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. These are the promises of God for the sons of God, for the re for the kings and priests and the vessels of the Lord who are new wine. We magnify God in his presence. He he reveals himself when we seek him. We draw near to God that God draws near to us and that we will have fellowship with him. And he, he does these things. God is supposed to be magnified in your life. So in Psalm chapter 71 is so powerful. In what verse? I'm sorry, sorry. Psalm 70 verse 4. It says, listen, this is so, it, this stirs me up every time I read this. Let all those that seek you meaning seeking the Lord, seek you and rejoice and be glad in you. Notice it said in you, because if you're, you, you can't say that you are a Christian, but you're not in him and he is not in you. How can these things be, you would ask or think? The same question in the form of <laughs> Nicodemus formed that question to Jesus He asked that question in Jesus How can these things be? Are you a master of Israel And do not know these things? Likewise for the professed believer Are you a Christian And do not know these things? We are in Jesus We are supposed to be We abide in him so that he abides in us because you as branches, you cannot bear fruit of yourself unless you abide in the true vine. Jesus is that true vine as he describes in John chapter 15. Let all those that seek you rejoice and be glad in you and let such as love your salvation love your deliverance from your old lifestyle, love your deliverance from sin. That you have been redeemed by, by the blood of Jesus Christ. Say continually, you are supposed to rejoice in this if you profess to be a Christian. You are supposed to rejoice. Let God be magnified. Let God be magnified. That's worshiping. That's showing majestic adoration to God. Because he formed you. He knew you before, the, before you was born. He knew you before the world was ever created. He knew you. He thought of you. You can't imagine that thought process because his thoughts are higher than our thoughts and his ways are higher than our ways. So let all those that seek you rejoice and be glad in you and let such as love your salvation say continually, let God be magnified. But I am poor and needy. Make haste unto me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer. O Lord, make no tarrying. So. We depend on God. The, the, the sons of God depend on him, rely on him. And he makes, He. we are supposed to be his father's business. We make our calling and election sure. And how do, how is God also magnified? Yes, I mentioned the three fundamentals. Reading the word, meditating on his word day and night. Um, worshiping him. In spirit and in truth, I made a post. I posted a, one of my brothers in the Lord posted this uh, worship, our worship service at our home church, 
and I posted the same video in my story. It's not inspired now. So if you missed it, you you, you can see what I shared. Um, we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. We worship him in the beauty of holiness because God is supposed to be magnified in the sons of God's life. Now, the next chapter, I love this one, too, as well. Uh, Psalm 71, it says this, In you, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. So, you, you know, when... Your, when you reject the will of God for space and time, um, God gives you space and time to devout yourself to him or to even acknowledge who he is and so that God can cleanse you from all unrighteousness. God gives you space and time to repent and, you know, because as it says in Acts is he winks at sin but now it time it comes a time that all men everywhere everywhere must repent of their sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So yes, God is gracious. He loves whom He has created. He, he died for Jesus Christ died for the ungodly, and is alive forevermore. The Word of God says He is alive. Be, he was alive, and and then He was dead. Behold, he is alive forevermore. Jesus Christ is alive. How do you know he's alive, Brother Joseph? He manifested in my life. I am not who I used to be. Brother Joseph, before he was a brother in the Lord, he was a bad, evil person. I don't want to mention the things that I used to do, but it was what the world does. The world uses profanity. The world watch the things that that defiles them those they watch the sports entertainment they watch the uh, the playoffs everything that defiles them they watch stuff that is vanity and vexation of spirit and is grasping for the wind that benefits them nothing in life until they stand before god and give an account by the reason why they watch the stuff they had no reason you, you were created to glorify god they you know I used to do things that I used to listen. I used to be I wanted to become a rapper. I used to want to become. I used to be in the, in the world wanting a record deal. And recently, I saw on you know, on social media somebody who I used to walk with, and we used to minister to this one guy. Who, when we was in the world, we used to be in a rap group and everything like that. I've been knowing that person since 94 and me and him used to perform and be in a studio making music and now the the one who I used to walk with he he got he professed to be uh, Christian he professed that he's saved and the person that we was ministering to he he did he he's not saved. He's still in the world. He's still making music, and we me and this guy used to minister to this one person, the one who's making still making music. And so, years later, now I I no longer walk with that person who was who I used to fellowship with because of his beliefs and and my um, counsel and instructions and wisdom from God to obey Jesus Christ. Things that he does that is seems to be worldly or carnal. I I had to separate myself. The Lord com, uh, communicated to me to be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of my mind. So even certain professed believers that do worldly things, I can't be walking with because God is holy. God is just. And so the individual that I start fellowshipping with or start walking with, the person who he was ministering to, he's still in the world. And I just, like, like I said, recently I just saw his social media page, uh, Facebook. And there's a post of the guy with who we used to minister on his page with a, he's still doing music. 
The guy is nearly 50 years old and still doing rap music. The guy is still, he looks even a hundred times more wicked than, than times before. That's what sin does to you. That's what evil, loving evil and being compromised do to you. I'm trying to find this one scripture in 1 Peter. I believe it's in chapter 1. Yes, it is. Verse 13. It says this. Let me, let me read this verbally and slowly so men who view this video, women who view this video can clearly understand. Excuse me. It says, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. What does it mean to gird up your the loins of your mind? It means what it, the next verse, the next part of the verse, be sober, meaning be receptive to the voice of God, to be sensitive to the voice of God, because again, you are created for a purpose. You are created to, to glorify God in this body that he has given you. You're given one body to endure and obey instructions, to be sensitive. The word of God says a sound heart is the life of the flesh, not the flesh that, des that desires to do evil. No, it's talking about your body. The heart, what's in your heart is who you are. The word of God says in, t in Proverbs 27, I believe it's verse 19. It says, as in water, face answers to face. So the heart of man to man, meaning What's in your heart is who you are. So if you have a heart to be holy as God is holy, that's obeying instruction. If you have a heart to be faithful as God is faithful, to be perfect as the Father, our Father in heaven is perfect. You have a heart that is obedient and receptive and God makes you more sensitive to his voice. That's what it means to gird up the loins of your mind. And be sober and hope to the end of the grace that is to be brought to you at the re revelation of Jesus Christ. Now this next verse is describing to, uh, to not compromise. It's describing to not be lukewarm. To not profess to be Christian and then hang with the unrighteous. Or fellowship with the unrighteous. And just things that you... You should not be doing, you're still doing, and then still calling yourself a Christian. It says this, as obedient children, that word obedience should stand out. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. We don't speak like how we used to speak. This individual who I used to walk with, he still uses slang from the streets. I'm not going to make make mention of what he what he still says at times, but he sound like he, he sound like he's from the streets. And no, this is not legalism. This is not to be legalistic or anything like that. God is holy. You are commanded to be holy as our Father in heaven is holy. But as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written. Now when you see it is written, Jesus Christ said it. Paul the Apostle said it. Peter is saying it. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. This is Commandments from God. Many professed Christians think the Old Testament is not relevant. The the Paul in Second Timothy says, it might be First Timothy. One of the one of the Timothys. All Scripture is given by inspiration. All Scripture, all Scripture is given by inspiration by God. It is profitable for doctrine, for reproof and correction and instructions in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished to every good work. You are commanded to be perfect, meaning perfection doesn't define to be compromised with the world. Perfection cannot be defined as one who is saved and 
still be carnal in their behavior by justifying uh, Christian hip hop or justifying uh, tattoos or justifying themselves. You are called and commanded to be holy as God is holy. Yes, there's some things that I, I have on me that is a part of my body. I'm not going to make mention, but I don't behave myself like they do because the word of God says as a declaration in Psalm 101, I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. A perfect heart describes communicate, communicating with God, commitment to God, devout as a Christian to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, that is perfection. In Hebrews chapter 6, it says, let us go on to perfection. That's that is solidifying truth of your purpose in this life as a Christian. To go, let us go on to perfection. So let me read this again. Wherefore, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13 through 16, wherefore gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. Yes, we don't dress how we used to dress. You may used to wear th uh, a clothing that attracts the world and get them to speak to you. Uh, the, 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 the Jordans and the Nikes and the... No, no, I'm not being legalistic here. So don't, let's not confuse yourself. Let's not confuse yourself. The, you know, the things that the world... People, the world, Christians that... Profess Christians that dress like the world... That's compromise. That's just let's just call it for what it is. That's compromise. And wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope it to the end of your grace that is be brought to you unto the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. So yes, again, we don't dress like the world and wear dress loud for attraction or to attract. Uh, attention to yourself. We don't dress like that. We don't be. We don't carry ourselves like that. We wear our clothes right, according to humbleness, according to modest apparel. Uh, yes, the, you know we dress modestly. We dress. Yes, this this is a Jesus shirt, John three sixteen. It's supposed to communicate the gospel, uh, brother. That's why brother Joseph wears Jesus shirts, and at times I wear. I like to dress casual. I like to wear polo shirts. I like to wear um, no button down shirts. And I'm not just trying to telling you how to dress, but this is righteousness that what I used to be, I'm no longer that person. When Paul by the Holy Ghost make mention in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have been passed away. Behold, all things become new. All things become new to Magnify God to magnify that God is working in your life. I don't wear my hat to the side no more. I don't wear baseball caps or basketball caps and wear it back or tilt it like a like a rapper. No, that's carnal. That attracts, that confuses the righteous as well if they don't know what they are being committed. Even the those who are, who are without. You, if you profess to be a Christian, you are commanded and responsible for communicating God's word, communicating the gospel of Christ Jesus, the power of God unto salvation to all that believe, from the Jew first and also to the uh, also to the Greek. Communicating the testimonies of Jesus Christ, for it is the spirit of prophecy. That's what the word of God says in Revelation nineteen. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. Yes, it's a commandment. So you don't obey this, 
guess what that means for you it it says a lot as in water face answers to face meaning face reflects face so the man's heart reveals the man what's in your heart is who you are and people will profess believers and even the ungodly will get mad at that truth you know first chronicles david made something king david made something very clear you know how describing how the lord protects us and i believe it's in chapter 12 first chronicles chapter 12 verse is verse 17 so to get the context of this let me read verse 15 first and to get you to, to see that the lord does protect his people now listen it says in verse 15 these are they that went over Jordan in the first month when it had overflown all his banks and they put to flight all them of the valleys both toward the east and toward the west. And there came of the children of Benjamin and Judah to the hold unto David. Now, here's what here's a very important part of this verse. In verse 17, it says, and David went out to meet them and answered and said to them, if you be if you become peaceably unto me to help me, my heart shall be knit with you or knit to you or united to you. But if you become to betray me to my enemies, seeing there is no wrong in my hands, that of the God of our fathers, look thereon and rebuke it. Meaning, if you're faithful and obedient to the Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father by his spirit, and one who and you meet somebody and you, you may have ministered to the person, you may have talked to the person, but only God knows if this person will be a traitor or will be faithful in being united with them. This person can, if this person it does evil, or plan or plot against the righteous, David says, the Lord, the, the God of our fathers look thereon and rebuke it, meaning God will bring forth judgment. God will bring forth a punishment to the individual or individuals for messing with God's people, to, to oppressing the righteous. We are the apple of his eye, the word of God says. We are his chosen vessels. The word of God says he lays up sound wisdom for the righteous and is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. When we walk uprightly, the Father, the Holy Ghost, Jesus Christ, the Lord protects us. He is our refuge and our fortress. Genesis chapter 13, uh, the Lord tells Abraham that. I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. We declare that over our lives and God protects us based on our faithfulness and obedience to God because we are his people. So uh, David, I got to read this verse 17 again. And David went out to meet them and answered and said unto them, if you become peaceably unto me to help me, my heart shall be knit to you, meaning my heart will be united to you or united with you. But if you become to betray me to my enemies, seeing there is no wrong in my hands, the God of your, our fathers look thereon and rebuke it. You know what that sounds like when the one who betrayed? Of course, you're thinking, when you hear the word betray in the word of God, you automatically think about Judas Iscariot. And guess what? You are absolutely correct. So this is what Judas did because Jesus Christ was found innocent. Even Judas Iscariot says, I have betrayed innocent blood. So, but if you come to betray me to my enemies, seeing there is no wrong in my hands. So Judas Iscariot had access of the keeping of the money. The fact that he was a thief that gave access for the devil to enter into him, to betray him. And sin makes you blind of what you're doing. If you agree with evil, if you agree with sin... You are blind. Just like the Pharisees, when Jesus told them, now that you say we see, therefore your sin remains. 
because they say they see, meaning they they thought they understood, they thought they can see what God is doing in their lives. They are blind because of their pride and their rebellion against God. So, if you become to betray me to my enemies, seeing there is no wrong in my hands, the God of our fathers look thereon and rebuke it. So, yes, God protects. And then it says this. Now, this is what when uh, Amasai, the chief of the captains, said when he heard the saying from David, then the spirit came upon Amasai, who was chief of the captains, and he said, your Yours are we, David, and on your side, you son of Jesse, peace. Peace be unto you and peace be to your helpers, for your God helps you. Because they saw the, the God of peace on King David, the son of Jesse's life. God was magnified in David. God was magnified in David. Your, yours are we, David, and on your side, you son of Jesse, peace Peace be unto you and peace be to your helpers for your God helps you. Then David received them. Now that he saw that they came in peace, David receives them and made them captains of the band. Yes. So in, in, in today's time, um, if you are not in a healthy church or under healthy leadership and you are obeying the voice of God, God will still God will still protect you, and I'm gonna I'm a prime example of that too because you know, I used to be in the in the military, but my church home at the same time was in one state and I was in another state. But I was planning to get out. I kept on seeking the Lord. This this church right here is where I want to be at. Is where your spirit is active at, and God was just showing me, and God fulfilled the promise. To put me where I'm at, to be rooted and grounded in Christ, in a healthy church under healthy leadership, to go forward, to press towards the mark for the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And God is magnified. God is supposed to be magnified. So yes, let this be an encouragement to all that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Let this be a an admonishment to Press towards the mark for the high calling. Let this be added to your faith virtue. Let this, let, let this be added to your faith as being persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other created thing or creature will be able to separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. My Lord, it should be your Lord as well. I am Brother Joseph Herbert, and this is for his glory.